Ryan, let's move into the matchup of Notre Dame and Navy. Today, we are going to focus on the stacking up matchup, and we're going to spend more time on certain matchups, a little less time on others with this unique, very unique Navy team. And I'll tell you what, there's some very interesting numbers for Navy when you look at their football team and some areas where you're like, wow, they're a lot better than you thought they would be. And some other areas where you're like, yeah, they're they're not very good there. So that's uh, a very, very interesting season for Navy, Ryan. I think when you look at them, uh, they're a team that their season started off really bad. They obviously lost at home to Delaware to start the season. They got blown out by Memphis. And then the next week, they earned a really good victory over East Carolina on the road. East Carolina is currently 6-3 and three and has a three-game win streak over Memphis. They beat UCF, who's in the top 25, by 21. And then they went on the road and beat Brigham Young. They also yep. have a 20-point victory over South Florida and an 18-point victory over Old Dominion and only lost to NC State by one. Mm-hmm. Navy had a larger, wide, larger, a larger margin of victory over East Carolina than NC State did, who's currently a top 20 football team. So, and then of course, what does Navy do the next week? They go out and lose to Air Force, lose, you know, they end up losing three of their next four. They have a blowout win over Tulsa in the middle of that, which is weird. An ugly win over Temple, and they're coming off a competitive but 10-point loss to Cincinnati. They're just not the same team they used to be. They're not the same team they were from like 15 to 17, 18 when they were competing for the AAC crown. They're just not that team. But I will say this. They're still dangerous. They're much better running the triple option. And we'll dive into the specifics of the triple option tomorrow in a show that I'm going to be doing with Jesse Styers. We'll dive into the specifics of what they're doing uh, tomorrow, Ryan. But they have definitely jumped up their rushing production this year. If you look at what Navy was doing last year, for example, they were at 226 a game. They're up over – actually, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I read that wrong. They're two, they're about the same as they were last year. I think I read that incorrectly. Uh, so they're, they're, they're still a rushing team, but they're, they're just not what they were in the past. But I will say this. They look a lot more like the defense that we saw during that stretch when they were pretty good than they have been the last couple of years. So that's what makes this a very intriguing game. Notre Dame, it's kickoff at noon on Saturday. It's going to be at, uh, M- what's it, M&T Bank Field, correct? Mm-hmm. Is that what yes. it is in Baltimore where the Ravens play? I've actually yep. played in the, on that field, Ryan. I played against your the team you played in college for in college. I played against Frostburg State in that field, actually. And so uh, I'll be down there for the game. Ryan, have you decided if you're going to be uh, driving down for the game or not yet or – it's it's tentative. We'll should Still know in, in the air. Couple, okay. Yeah, by tonight we'll probably know. By well, I'll, I'll be there for it. But uh, this is an intriguing matchup, Ryan, and we'll have plenty to talk about as we dive into it. But I really want to start off with the, st- the statistical breakdown. Mm-hmm. We're going to begin with the matchup of the Notre Dame offense against the Navy defense, Ryan. And this is a this is an area where it's good on good and bad on bad. I mean, that's just kind of what it, the reality of what it is. Notre Dame's offense. Uh, you look at Notre Dame's rush offense, Ryan, and it is really amazing to see what they've been able to do the last five games. Mm-hmm. Even with a, a a game against Stanford where the, the, yard, the, the line played well, but the running game wasn't overly productive because they only had 150 yards for a host of reasons, but they ran for over 200 yards in five of their last six games. For context purposes, last year, Notre Dame only ran for over 200 yards three times all season. They have five such performances in, in just through nine games this season. And they've jumped their they've jumped their yards per game up quite a bit. If you look at some of the stacking up numbers uh, for this football team, so if you, for example, if you kind of talk about where they were uh, going into the, the – was it the – what was the first game they had 200 yards? It was against North Carolina, right? Yeah. Uh, they were, I mean, averaging – less than I'm actually pulling it up now. They were averaging uh, 117 rushing yards per game after that was after three games. They were only averaging 117 yards per game. And then you even look at um, the the Stanford game. So after 200 yard games uh, in a row, then you go into the Stanford game and they're still only averaging at that time after back to back 200 yard games, they're only averaging them. See if, see if it'll pull up here. It's, being loading a little bit slow for me today. Uh, but I think they were only averaging 100 in the 140s at that particular time, Ryan. And to see them now jump all the way up to where they were 174, excuse me, after those back-to-back games. And now you look at them just three games later and they're creeping up to 200 yards per game. The evolution of this rushing attack in the last five, six weeks has really been impressive. 117 going into the North Carolina game. That was after three games. Six games later, 
they're now creeping up on 200 and they've been one of the the best rushing attacks in the country here over the last six games. Here's the surprising part, Ryan. They're mm-hmm. going against one of the best statistical rush defenses in the country in Navy. That is not something I would have predicted in a year where I, there's a lot of things that have happened that I would not have predicted. This is one of them. A Navy mm-hmm. team that's this good against the run uh, is uh, shocking to say the least. I mean, they were decent against it last year, 131 last year, but 88 yards a game is a really impressive number for Navy. And they're doing it, Ryan, with consistency. I mean, the only team that's had over 160 yards rushing on them, actually, let me let me check that. The only the only two team only two teams have gone for over 105 yards against them on the ground. Air Force at 200, and Houston at 180. The Houston game was not good. Uh, obviously, Houston's not a great rushing team. They're 160 a game, but Air Force this year, Ryan, is averaging 324 yards a game. Held them over 120 yards below their season average. And if you look at the rest of their production this year. 13 yards, 91 yards, 25 yards, 20 yards, 55 yards, 103 yards, and 105 yards. And you're looking at the yards per carry, too. 0. 0.5, 2.8, 3.7, 4.3, 1.4, 5.0, 5.3, 1.0, 2.8. 5. So you can't really use the whole, well, they're just not giving up yards because they're not on the field very much. Nope. They're not. They're, the, every metric that they have defensively when it comes to the run game, grades out very, very high from a production or lack of production for the other team standpoint. Well, and you look at that tackle for loss number, Brian. I mean, they're 47th in college football with 47 with um, 56 tackles for loss. Excuse me. It's not a crazy number, right? So that tells me that they have been an efficient team as well, Mm -hmm. stopping the run. Like they're not, it's not like they're getting a bunch of negative runs and then they're getting gashed, right? Like they're consistently making plays at or near the line of scrimmage. Like they are in 3.2 yards. I mean, you know what's funny is these numbers are almost mirror image to what Clemson did, you know, coming right. into the game last week. And obviously, you know, different level of competition and all that type of stuff. But I mean, Navy has surprisingly done incredibly well at, at stopping the run. And it wasn't something that I was actually expecting going into this week because, you know, it's just a, I think it's a, I think it's a uh, little bit of a misconception that I ju- my mind jumps to that like Navy is probably bad at, at stopping the run, but they are a well coached team right. in the front seven. They're a well coached team in in being gap sound in the run game, and Notre Dame has a challenge. Should Notre Dame be able yeah. to run the football on that? Oh one? yes, there's no doubt about yeah. it. But yes, that's what we'll say is that Navy is not going to come in with without a inkling of possibility of stopping right. it. Right, like they are going to come in and say, "Hey, you have a great rushing attack." We have a great rush defense. Let's yeah. go to work, man. Let's have a battle at it. You know, I mean, so you're playing against a good unit, a good run, run stopping defense. Notre Dame has to exert their exert their will on them this week in the run game. They have to be ready for the challenge because Navy is, again, you're in Baltimore. You're away from home. Navy's going to come in this one with some juice going, right? Like, oh, wow, we're going to get the shot at a team that just humiliated Clemson on national television. Like, let's, let's give it a go here, man. So, it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting matchup and one that I'm very intrigued to watch how it kind of plays out in this one. Like, is this a thing where we're talking about, oh, Navy should shut down? No, no, no. We're not saying that. But no, what no, I am no. saying is if Notre, Dame, if Notre Dame runs the ball effectively this week, and number one, you hope that the Notre Dame players have a healthy respect for Navy and you hope that the Notre Dame coaches have a healthy respect for Navy's defense. Because, again, if you don't, they can limit you, right? I mean, they, they can. We've seen it happen to this Notre Dame team before. Uh, if they run successfully against Notre Dame against Navy, the reason this matters is because you have to respect how how quality of a performance it is. So if Notre Dame does go out and pound out over 200 yards again this week, then you have to look at it and say, well, you know, hey, that was a that was a pretty good performance. It was a pretty good performance uh, by the team. And yes, the rank for the Notre Dame yards per attempt is 49th, not 4.9. So that's apologies on 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 my behalf. But when you look at Notre Dame and, and you kind of look at what they've done. In recent games, I think it gives a little bit more, even more context to where Notre Dame is. And obviously right now, uh, you look at the Irish, they rank 28th in yards. But I think we can all say, confidently say that this team is is certainly a much better team consistently week after week after week. And we've seen it now really for six straight weeks where the offensive line has really played at a high level where we can kind of ignore the first not ignore but but kind of chalk the first three games up as this is a football team that's still finding its way with a new coach 
So, but if you look at the last six games alone and you just look at where Notre Dame is in the last six games and project that where they would be, they're at 233.8 yards per game, Ryan, which would rank them 10th in the country. And it would rank them 10th in the country behind three teams that I know of that run the triple option. I don't know if like Georgia State does. I'm not sure if they do. Uh, but I, I do know that that Air Force, Army, and UCF, or I mean uh, Navy do. Mm-hmm. So you talk about Notre Dame ranking 10th in the country, 7th among non-triple option teams, and they'd be 4th in the country amongst Power 5 teams in rushing the football, if you could project that over the course of the season, which puts into context. And they've done all that with almost no semblance of a pack, pass attack for the last month. So it just kind of puts into context just how good this Notre Dame rush offense is. And Navy has yet to play a Power 5 team. That has to be taken into account, too. Now, that doesn't diminish that Navy's done really well against the quality competition, but let's be honest, they have not faced a rushing attack like Notre Dame this year. They have not. That's what that's what was the craziest thing about that Clemson game, Brian, was not only did you run for 260-whatever yards against one of the best rush defenses in college football, you also did it without a passing game, right? Like, Notre Dame literally just went, you know, we're going to, we're going to run the football on you today and we're going to dominate you. And in that instance – you like the matchup of Notre Dame coming into this game. Cause like you said, they're on a roll running the football. They just dominated one of the best rushing defenses in all of college football. They have another opportunity to do it against another quality run defense, but there's no reason to think that Notre Dame can't do it. But at the end of the day, I, I like what you said yesterday on the show that this gives Notre Dame, I think a little bit of like, Hey, we, we need to come and play this week, right? Like this team isn't just going to hand it to us. It's not like they're just going to come up and show up and just, you know, collect their stuff and leave right afterwards, right? Like they're only here to play a football game and they're going to have some confidence coming in with the with these numbers kind of in front of them. But at the end of the day, Notre Dame has another challenge in front of them and they have to be up for the challenge against Navy. Advantage Notre Dame, Ryan. I know yep. that Navy statistically has the edge, but we try to do context in these uh, examples and I think Notre Dame certainly gives the edge. Here's one interesting part of Navy. Mm-hmm. They're actually a tad bigger than Syracuse. If you look at their starting lineup, they're starting defense. Now they're a three, four, they're sort of a three, three, five team, but I, I kind of think it's more three, four mm-hmm. uh, personnel wise. It's, it's kind of a three, three, five. It's kind of a three, three, five personnel wise, but it's more of a three, four structurally in my yeah. opinion. Would you agree with that, Ryan? I would, but their front is actually not that small compared to, past years but it's it's undersized but you've got a nose guard that's six foot 256 he looks almost the same as the kid that Syracuse has he actually looks a little bigger to me even though the other kid was listed as 10 10 pounds heavier I don't think that kid you and I saw that kid very up close and personal I didn't think he was 266 pounds probably not in my opinion the kid at Navy looks to be accurately listed six foot 256 that's Donald uh, Bernard Jacob Mm -hmm. Busick is six four 256 Keep in mind that the that similar position at Syracuse is about 215, 220 pounds. And then Clay Cromwell is their defensive tackle. He's 6'3", 292. Yep. So they actually have decent size. And then, of course, they have an edge rusher uh, who's 6'2", 209. They'll bring some kids off the bench with some decent size uh, as to Ryan. But, like, their number two defensive end, 6'3", 251. Their number two defensive tackle, 6'2", 273. Their number two nose guard who will play a decent amount is 6'2", 273. Or they have an edge player named Jordan Sanders that'll play who's 6'5", 227. So they're not big, but mm-hmm. they're a little bigger than Syracuse was at linebacker right. and defensive line, but it still should be uh, certainly a size advantage for Notre Dame. No question would, about it. Similar to Syracuse. Yes, I, I would agree with that. I mean, the one thing that they do well is they do play with good leverage, right? Like they're one of those teams that they understand they're undersized and – I mean, we, ha- we came into the Syracuse game kind of thinking the same thing, right? Like these defensive linemen aren't the biggest guys in the world, but they understand their limitations. They understand their strengths. So Navy's going to come and they're going to challenge, right? And I mean, obviously, size advantage wise, you know, you would hope <laughs> that a combination of Zeke Correll and Jared Patterson, and Josh Lugg would be able to dig out a six foot, 256 sure. pound nose tackle. But, you know, until it happens, it happens, right? So that's kind of the well, in- interesting conversation. And the good thing is they've, they've had to do, do that recently. They did that two weeks exactly. ago. So, exactly. And that's one of the times where Zeke Carell's lack of ideal height helps, helps him a ton <laughs> in matchups yeah. like this, you know? And so that's why I've always said, I don't think Zeke's height is the issue people make it out to be. Mm-hmm. I think it helps him get under the pads of bigger defensive tackles, and I think it helps him root out guys like this. 
So I think it's it's his his length and height is something that I think is a little overplayed. If you want to say maybe he's not really 308, okay, we can maybe have that conversation. But I think we've seen this year that Zeke Carell's size is not an issue for him at this point in time. No doubt. Remember I said the, the Notre Dame run game against the Navy pass game or, or Navy run defense was good on good? Yep. Well, this is the bad on bad matchup. The Notre Dame pass offense against the Navy pass defense. I am going to say something that I have not said in a long time. Notre Dame has the edge statistically in pass off and pass game off with their offense over their opponent. This is the difference from Navy a couple years ago, a few years ago when they had a really good, a really good defense, Ryan. Mm-hmm. If you go back and watch like that 2015 team, especially, they had legit low power five level athletes in the secondary, especially mm-hmm. at corner. They don't have that this year. That's the weakness of their of their team is their secondary is just not good, and you can see it here. Hundred now, I, here's what some people say. Well, the reason Navy's really good at, at rushing defense is because teams can't throw on them. That's only true if you look at yards. Mm-hmm. The the thing, and that's why the other the other metrics are important because they're very good at yards per attempt as well without a lot of sacks. And so you can't just say it's it's well. 88 factors into the fact that teams just throw on them. Mm -hmm. But, okay, so they'd be 105 if teams, you know, ran more, if they were better against the pass. They'd still be a very good rush defense for their level, right? But you look at this, as as bad as their name has been this year, Ryan, it's still significantly greater. They hold an advantage against them in almost every statistical category with the exception of yards per game and their one ranking spot off. So mm-hmm. I can't believe I'm going to say it, but this is advantage Notre Dame. And, and honestly, Ryan, and we'll get into this more in the keys tomorrow because this will be one of our keys to, to the game. This is a week where the Notre Dame pass offense has to find something yes. that it can hang its hat on. These next two weeks especially, but this week especially, this is a this has to be a confidence-building game for the Notre Dame pass attack, for Drew Pine, for the receivers. I don't want to see Michael Mayer catch 13 balls for 150 yards. I don't. I don't want to see Notre Dame run it 60 times for 290 yards against Navy. I don't. Mm -hmm. I want to see Notre Dame run the ball and be who you are. Got to be who you are. But within that, let's maybe start cranking up some of the stuff in the throwing game that you want to get going, that you know you need to get going against USC and in the postseason. Let's start getting that cranked up because this is the week where you can start to kind of build up some confidence in those areas. We, we have talked about get-right games in the past. Like, this is a get-right opportunity for the passing attack of Notre Dame. Like, this is it, man. Like, if it doesn't happen this week, then, folks, it's not going to happen this year. <laughs> like, it's just mm-hmm. not going to, man. I mean, this is a it's, – it's really weird to say a team that averages only 184 yards passing a game has a clear advantage in this game. But, I mean, they do. <laughs> I mean, they do. Athletically, it's not even close. I mean, they have a, a clear, clear advantage. They'll have guys open. Navy also doesn't get a ton of pressure on the quarterback, so there will be opportunities, especially if Notre Dame is able to run the football like we know that they can, and they're going to have some clear ability to you know get guys open while protecting the passer. So this is the ultimate. If it's not going to happen this week, it's never going to happen for you type of yeah. situation, man. Like it, it, There's no excuse for not having a more productive passing attack. Does it have to be no. groundbreaking? No. Does it have to be no. record setting? No. It has to be better though, for sure. Right. I mean, you can't leave this game with 90 yards passing, right? Like that is like I mean, could oh, you? Yeah, you could you well, could you could blow Navy out with 90 passing yards. I was going to say that doesn't say. make this No, I get what you're saying, Ryan. Yeah. I I'm, I'm mm-hmm. adding to what you're saying. I'm not disagreeing sure. with you at all, I promise. Yep. I'm adding to it that yeah, could you do that and still win by 3 4 touchdowns? Sure. Does that make you a better football team? No. No. It doesn't. You have to build on who you are right now. Like you said before, I mean, Notre Dame could run the ball every single play during this game, and they could blow this team out. Like, they're that talented, right? Like, they could do that. So they could control this game. They could control the line of scrimmage. They'll never have to throw the football. But did that make you a better team than you were coming into the football game? That's my biggest point, right? Like, there's a growth opportunity here in the passing game. And I know we've talked about this in some other weeks as well, but you're going against a team that is – not only not very good technically against the pass, but also there's a big talent gap, a big talent Mm -hmm. advantage. So this is an opportunity for Notre Dame to take full advantage of this matchup. All right. We'll need to spend a lot of time on that matchup because it's not a pretty one. Scoring offense against the scoring defense. uh, This is where it's a little bit more evenly matched statistically. We've seen Notre Dame take a bit of a jump 
in red zone offense the last couple weeks, Ryan. I think that's been one of the things that has helped this team uh, in the last few games. Notre Dame in their last two games have had nine red zone opportunities against Syracuse and Clemson, and they've scored touchdowns on seven of them, which is a, a really good rate. That That's, that's kind of like right into that wheelhouse of, of where you want to be to be one of the better – uh, red zone teams in the country. I mean, if you if you just look at like the rate they've had the last two weeks, Ryan, and you put it out over the course of the entire season, they're tied for seventh in red zone touchdown rate. That's how good they've been the last two weeks, right? So I think content. You, I just thought a number seventy seven point eight percent, and you're probably like, okay, well, what does that mean, right? Well, that would tie them with Eastern Michigan for seventh in the country if you expanded that over the course of the entire season. They'd be behind Charlotte, Mississippi State, Ohio State, Maryland, Penn State, North Carolina, and they'd be tied for seventh with uh, Eastern Eastern Michigan. At that point in time, ahead of Tennessee, ahead of USC. Now, if you look at the last three games and you expanded out a little bit more, they had some missed opportunities against um, against uh, UNLV, as we talked about that week. But even then, they're 12 of 17, which puts them at 70.6, which still has them uh, 24th in the country. So they're definitely trending in a better direction when it comes to putting the ball in the end zone. The problem still is, Ryan, they're just not getting enough red zone opportunities because they're still not moving the ball with the kind of consistency you need. You know, all those numbers we said are are, are good and everything, but when you look at Notre Dame's red zone opportunities, they rank 60th in the country. Mm-hmm. Now, the context to that is, well, you, know, you could say, well, some teams, you know, rank lower in red zone offense because red zone opportunities because they score big plays a lot. That's sure, but you'd have to be one heck of a big play team to, to be 60th in the country in red zone opportunities and have a, a, a good offense. They just don't get the ball in the red zone enough. That has to change against Navy. Now, Navy's red zone defense has been really good. Mm-hmm. You know, so I mean that that number right there, Ryan, 13 to 29. Uh, that number surprised me. Navy's not letting people get into the red zone a whole lot. And the reason for that is, if you look up there at that yards per play average, 112th. That's going to be a key for me this week, Ryan. We're going to talk about that tomorrow in our keys to the game is the big plays. But Notre Dame will get into the red zone. Mm-hmm. They've got to get continue to punch it in and get six. And obviously the ground game is going to be a piece of that. But this is the week where I'd like to really see them maybe take a couple looks at some things that they like in the red zone pass game wise. Uh, and, and and not just Michael Mayer only. Fine, if you want to use Michael Mayer, that's cool. He better be a red zone weapon. But in, in these kind of situations, I wouldn't mind saying, hey, let's let's give Deion Coles or Tobias Merriweather a fade into the end zone on on the 14-yard line this week. You know, let's let's do something like that to – to try to see if we can get that part of our game going as well. Because if you can add that as a weapon in the red zone, Ryan, it makes Audric Estime and Logan Diggs and you know the run game even more effective once you get inside the 15-yard line. This is the most maddening thing that I'm going to say all day, Brian, and it's really sad. The fact that 29.1 points per game is starting to make me happy considering we were at like 22 yeah. for like four straight weeks. <laughs> like it was well, just, see, it, it doesn't really yeah. make me happier though, Ryan, because if you look at it, a lot of that's coming from non-offensive parts of the team. I mean, they have scored three non-offensive touchdowns in the last three, two games. And so it just, it, I get what you're saying. I do, but it's kind of like, it's that glimmer of hope kind of thing. But look, the reality is if, if you, if you take out just the direct touchdowns, like the touchdowns that the defense defense actually got, they're only at 26.8. And that's just the last two games. That doesn't include other scores they've gotten. And it also doesn't include, for example, uh, the drive against Syracuse where they got the ball uh, at the two-yard line. I mean, I still even counted that for the defense or the offense. If you take that out, you know, this is still a team that's only averaging 26 points per game, way below where they need to be. This is a game where you try to get right against a Navy team that's little, you know, going to control. The, you're going to have limited possessions in this game. You probably, I mean, if No Name's defense eats Navy up, then maybe they do have eight to ten possessions. But you know, usually looking at like six to eight against this team, got to be very efficient with the football. And when you get your chance to get seven, you got to get seven. I mean, and that's going to be a big key. And of course, of part of that comes with protecting the football. Navy's been a decent turnover team this year on defense. That's been one of their few saving graces is they they actually have a decent, you know, you know rank 30, was it 36th in turnovers gained. That's obviously a, a positive for them. And it, and but, it looks uh, like 
because if I remember correctly, they've only intercepted six passes. So that means they've recovered nine fumbles, right. which is very opportun- opportunistic. Yes. So nice. You see right there, Ryan, they've given up 20 touchdown passes, but they've given up six. They've picked off six passes. So to your point, yeah. nine fumbles. And that means they're putting the ball, they're, they're forcing the ball to get put on the ground. That or they, they have the best luck in the world. I mean, teams don't lose nine fumbles against you if they're just in, undisciplined and dropping the ball. It means you're doing things to create those mistakes, and that's going to be a key for a Notre Dame team that going in the last couple of day games uh, is going to be, you know, has been an issue at times. We we had one question, Ryan, from Lucas D- Deason. Will Notre Dame need to pass against Navy, though? Yeah, and that's kind of our point is it depends on what you refer to by need. Do they need to in regard to beat Navy? No, but this is not a game that's just about beating Navy. That's not how, to me, that's not how coaching works. Like, we got something we know we're going to need to do down the road against USC that we're not doing right now. This is one of those games you start to introduce that. So by the time you get to USC, it's not the first time that you've really worked on it, trying to get good at it. Yep. So do they need it to beat Navy? No. Mm-hmm. Uh, do they need to do it to make themselves a better football team? Absolutely. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow.